Okay, let's start with macro Um, So what they are, macro are systems collecting atmospheric natural thermal radiation. Um, the hardware is uh, low maintenance and um, provides automatic operation in all weather conditions. Um, what do they measure? They measure electromagnetic power uh, collected by the antenna per unit area and within a frequency band. And those are called channels. What can you infer from the measurements? Well, it depends on the channels, on the number of channels and the frequency allocation. Uh, but in general, you can um, infer um, some thermodynamics of the atmosphere. So temperature, humidity and uh, uh, cloud liquid. The typical spectral range that is used by these instruments is between 20 and 60 gigahertz. And um, that's because uh, in this range, we have a feature of water vapor, a line absorption of the water vapor. Here you are looking at um, a plot of the absorption coefficients of the atmosphere. And uh, so this line uh, is um, a water vapor line absorption. And then you have a large absorption complex by oxygen. And then you ha also have uh, absorption by liquid water. So if you sum all this absorption, you have the total, which is the black line. And usually um, the microradiometer channels are located on the wings of these two features. And uh, here we have water vapor channels and liquid water channels, as well as temperature channels on the oxygen band. So again, the observed thermal radiation comes primarily for the atmospheric gases, oxygen and water vapor, and hydrometers, mainly liquid water. And the measured quantity is radiance, which, uh, which units are uh, watts per meter square per stellar radiance per Earth, which is not very convenient. In fact, Usually radiance is converted into brightness temperatures uh, to give the um, useful uh, units and convenient units of Kelvin. So brightness temperature um, has the units of Kelvin, but, but indeed measure uh, intensity of radiation. So TB then are inverted to obtain atmospheric variables, uh, temperature profiles, humidity profiles, and also column integrated water in terms of water vapor, integrated water vapor, and liquid water path. And to invert the brightness temperature into uh, atmospheric variables, you need a inversion methods. And typical inversion methods are statistical regression and neural network. Those are usually provided by the uh, manufacturers in the, um, in the software they provide with the instruments. However, there are also other um, inversion methods like uh, optimal estimation or 1D VAR that are more physical. Um, those are not provided by the manufacturers. However, there are already tools that you can download and use with your data. So how can we get the profiling capabilities from passive uh, observations? Well, the idea is to have differential absorptions. So different channels correspond to different absorptions, which means that they can each channel can see uh, um, a different depth in the atmosphere. And this is uh, pictured through the so-called weighting functions. Um, here you see profiles of weighting function, which basically uh, tells you the, uh, the contribution of different layers uh, to the observations. So if you have weighting functions like this that are pretty smooth or with height, it means that you are uh, you can retrieve the water vapor uh, integrated content along the vertical, uh, but also you can have uh, some information about the profile. For the temperature, you have the weighting function that are peaking sharply close to the surface, which means that you can have a, a um, information about the temperature profiles close to the surface in the bundle layer especially. When you have the um, main products, then you have you can infer also derived products. Those are, for example, potential temperature and virtual potential temperature, uh, mixing layer height, uh, forecast indices that are usually used with the radiosons like KO, uh, K index or CAPE. Uh, you can also um, estimate inversion height and strength and uh, atmospheric attenuation and so on. Uh, what are the advantages and limitations of this kind of instrumentations? Well, advantages, it's um, the, the hardware is kind of robust. 
um, it gives unattended operations and low to moderate maintenance and 27 um, continuous vertical profiles in nearly all weather, which means in clear, cloudy and up to light precipitation. The limitation is that uh, it provides low to moderate vert vertical resolution, and this is what I try to uh, explain with the weighting functions. Uh, it's useful to uh, have a data monitoring and quality control to, um, um, to check uh, about any drift of the instrument. Um, uh, it needs some cleaning sometimes because it, uh, um, the coverage of the antenna uh, may become dirty and uh, depending on the environment, uh, if you have a lot of dust, then you have um, more frequent uh, uh, cleaning to be done. Um, in addition, most of uh, types requires attended in place service for um, calibration and radon replacement about, um, let's say six months. Uh, and retrievals are not available under rain. Um, here it's a table with the typical accuracy uh, that you can obtain for different uh, um, uh, products. And those have been um, demonstrated and confirmed by uh, many different uh, investigators and uh, in the open literature. The types of instruments you can get, well, uh, you can get um, dual or triple channel, which are made to uh, only estimate the integrated water vapor and liquid water path. Uh, or you can get uh, temperature profilers, uh, single or multiple channel, humidity profilers, or you can get what uh, are called full profilers, which gives you all the, pro the products uh, I just mentioned. The manufacturers, um, as far as I know, are three, Artex, uh, Radiometrix, and RPG, and those are the top products they uh, offer. Uh, for Artex, they uh, offer a temperature profiler up to one kilometer, single channel with uh, continuous elevation scanning, while both Radiometrix and RPG offer full profilers up to 10 kilometers, multiple channels and uh, elevation scan, and also azimuthal uh, scan optional. Finally, there is uh, also some research and development going on, and, um, and I have to say that significant advancement was uh, within uh, the European cost actions, including probe. Um, concerning, we are looking at new applications, new market, um, like uh, renewable energy and telecommunications. Uh, also synergy with other instruments, in particular uh, infrared radiometer and uh, cloud radar for fog uh, detection. Um, also um, synergy with IRI, which is the infrared uh, inf interferometer that has been mentioned in the question before, as well as a dial, the differential um, absorption lighter that will be um, explained in a later uh, lecture. And uh, you can see here uh, just a, um, a quick um, demonstration that when you uh, combine different instruments, then you get uh, reduced uncertainty in temperature and humidity profiles. Finally, numerical weather prediction data simulation. This is really boosting now because uh, since uh, tools uh, were made available and tested, uh, now there are experiments at uh, DWD, Meteo France, and Meteo Suisse at least. Finally, the last um, slide is about networking. Um, since microradiometer will be part of the UMETNET e-profile, so the uh, um, program, the profiling program of the European network of uh, MET services. And uh, so the data lifecycle will be needed uh, and uh, will be worked out in the next uh, two years. But you will hear more about this on May 25th when we will talk about networks on probe second introductory lecture. So I close, I finish my lecture here. Uh, I hope uh, I was uh, able to um, <clears throat> be clear and fast and um, I'm open for questions uh, before I pass the mic to the next speaker. As you can see from the Fed, there is one uh, remark about uh, price and maintenance which could be limitation to the use of uh, microwave radiometers. Yes, so price, it really depends on, on the, uh, on the um, kind, uh, the type you want to buy, just a temperature profiler or you want a full profiler. Um, so I, I wouldn't, uh, I, I mean, you can always email uh, me and I will give you more information, but I would say that from temperature profilers to put full profiles you are from 70 to 150k uh, kilo euros so that's the um, the range and uh, maintenance um, again it's i would say it's low maintenance uh, because you might need to do uh, twice a year 
the replacement of the radon and the calibration. And um, it's just about um, other instruments. You might have to clean the window uh, once in a while. So I, I still would say that it's um, um, low to moderate maintenance. There are other questions, but maybe it's better to move on and to keep them uh, from the final discussion. 